dual major, dual degree, Harvard and NEC, which is the New England Conservatory. How to even apply to something like this? Let's talk a little bit about the money. Namaste everyone, this is Avanti, and today we're going to talk about dual degree programs. You may have heard of the Harvard-Berkeley dual degree program, which is between Harvard University and the Berkeley College of Music. It's a very, very new program, only started a few years ago. I was actually the first person to do it, and so I will give you some insider tips and tricks. And we'll talk a little bit about why these exist, what people are even interested in, and feel free to let me know if you have any questions at the end. So what exactly is a dual degree program? There are often programs between two institutions or within the same institution, but two different types of degrees. That's why the difference between dual major, where you can major in more than one thing, and dual degree is in the majors, you get a single degree, but you can study different things. Whereas with the dual degree, you actually end up with two degrees. So the ones that are within the same college, there are some colleges where you have a dual bachelor's, master's, for example, in CS, in computer science, you can do, uh, at Harvard, for example, you can do your bachelor's and then within the same time or with an extra year, finish up your master's as well. So you get both degrees. When it happens with other institutions, it's usually because that current institution doesn't offer what the other one is providing. So there have been dual degrees between business schools and medical schools, business schools and public policy schools and things like that for many, many years. But there are more and more new ones cropping up that are between two very vastly different disciplines. And such an example is Harvard Berkeley, which I like to describe as a program meant for intellectuals with creative passions or creatives with intellectual passions, whichever way you want to frame it. And that's how I see myself as well. There are similar programs with Harvard and NEC, which is the New England Conservatory. There's a program between Brown University and RISD, which is the Rhode Island School of Design. There is also a program between Tufts and NEC, which is Tufts and the New England Conservatory. And there's also Columbia and Juilliard, which is a well-known music school. So there's several of these, and they're often meant for combining an artistic discipline with a lot of rigor with a more academic, you know, standard traditional academic discipline. And a lot of the reason why people do programs like these is because they have two very strong, distinct interests that they want to explore. And maybe if you want an acceleration to that program as well. For me, the reason was I was already, you know, semi-professional when I joined college and I wanted to make sure that I was still keeping my professional music career kind of in, in check and still, you know, learning about the world in different ways at Harvard. So, so for me, having both of those opportunities was just absolutely incredible and really opened my mind up to just a lot of possibilities in the world. So the way the program works fundamentally is you get a bachelor's degree at Harvard and you can study anything in your undergrad. I studied psychology and global health and health policy. Those were my majors at Harvard. And at Berkeley, you can study anything you'd like as well, but you are often rewarded with a master's degree. So it's a dual bachelor's master's where you get your bachelor's, your undergrad at Harvard, and you get your master's or your postgrad at Berkeley. But during your undergrad, you also take a bunch of classes at Berkeley, and I'll talk about that in a little further detail. But first, let's figure out how to even apply to something like this. So the way it works is you have to actually apply to both institutions separately. So you apply to Harvard as you normally would. I made a very detailed video on the process, which I'm going to link up here. And um, it talks about how to apply as an international student as well, if that applies to you. And then you also apply to Berkeley separately. So the Harvard process, there's a video for the Berkeley process. I'll talk about it a little bit right now, but if you want a detailed video, please let me know and I can make a full video about the Berkeley application process and the audition. So the way that Berkeley, because it's a conservatory at the end of the day, or it's a music focused school, the way that it differs from other college applications abroad is that it's focused primarily on the craft. So you have to go in with your transcripts, they'll ask you for your grades, maybe for your SATs and a bunch of other things, but SAT is not mandatory, it's not compulsory. But unka main focus hoga music. And so you have to go in with what they call a principal instrument, which is a fancy way of saying what's your primary musical talent, right? So are you a singer? Is it your voice? Do you play the piano? Do you play the guitar? Whatever it is. And they'll expect you to audition with that. You have to audition. Your audition is usually five minutes and then they'll test you on a few different things like ear training and different things like that, sight reading, things of that nature. 
So it can be a little bit nerve-wracking because it does feel like, you know, when we see TV and like an American Idol audition or whatever, it does feel like that in the way that they're just sitting there and staring at you. But it's, it's also fun. And if you are internationally based, you can also do your audition online. I think this year everybody's audition is online. Or there are some countries, India included, where they often have people come to take auditions in different cities. So just be on the lookout for that, for these kinds of colleges and schools. Once you get into Harvard separately and you get into Berkeley separately, there is a special committee that reviews applications from students admitted to both and they judge whether they think you will be a good fit for the program in terms of whether you'll be able to manage your time, etc, etc. And yeah, so it's actually pretty selective. My year, I was actually the first person to do it, right? So there was only one person and um, with Every subsequent year, the year below me, there were seven, the year below that, there was 10. So I would say approximately they're trying to accept around 10 to 15 every year. And it's cool, they're from different walks of life, different instruments, different backgrounds, and they're interested in studying different things. And that's, I think, really the cool part about it. So before we get into what the program looks like when you're in it, let's talk a little bit about the money. So the tuition structure works such that you have your regular tuition at Harvard, and if you get financial aid, then it'll all be covered at Harvard itself. And the additional cost for Berkeley is $8,000 per year, which is about $4,000 a semester. And what that gives you is, of course, access to the classes, which I'll talk about. It also gives you a Berkeley student ID and access to any and every facility in the same way every other Berkeley student has. So you can access the studios, the labs, the practice rooms, you can book ensemble rooms, you basically have all the powers and privileges of a Berkeley student, which is honestly incredible. So here's how the coursework looks. Whatever your requirements are at Harvard, your basic graduation requirements, your major, minor, blah, 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 that still stays. You have to do everything your regular course load any other Harvard student is doing, you have to do that. Everything at Berkeley is on top and it's an additional. So it definitely does take a lot of work and a lot of time management. The average student has to take a minimum of two classes per semester. One of them is what they call a private instruction, which just means a one-on-one -on -one class with an instructor in your principal instrument, which is that word, which just means whichever instrument you're focusing on. So for me, that was the voice. And you usually have to take an ensemble class, which is something that combines you with other musicians so that you learn how to work in a team context in multiple capacities. So those are the two bare minimum requirements. You can also take other classes in preparation for your master's, whatever you want that master's to be in, or just for your own self. My approach was, I'm getting access to these two institutions, so how do I get my pesa basu? That was literally my approach, and learn from incredible professors and teachers and artists at you know, both institutions. So on that approach, I was probably taking four or five classes at Berkeley in addition to the regular course load at Harvard, which is four classes. So it was a lot of classes. Luckily, the Berkeley classes were, you know, for fewer credits and a little bit less time. So it wasn't too crazy. But at the same time, it's just using a different part of your brain. And for me, I really, really wanted to take advantage of the fact that I was there in person, able to learn from these incredible you know, people who had been performing artists, touring artists, folks in the industry, in the music industry in many different ways. So my focus was primarily class-wise, it was on vocal training of all different kinds. So, you know, basic voice training, vocal health, vocal wellness, uh, dance and movement and things based on, you know, you as an artist and as a singer. I also focused on songwriting. I also focused a little bit on music business and just general performance and voice techniques. That was my primary focus with the studying part of it. But the other part of it, you know, a lot of college, no matter what, where you go to college, is the network in the sense of, of course, friends you make and the connections you build, but also whether it's with the professors or, you know, people associated with the schools, really how to build that. And, you know, at a place like Berkeley and a place like Harvard, there's people who've been incredible professionals in their field. So, you know, building those connections with them and genuine relationships, not just how can you help me, but really building those genuine relationships was really fun for me and um, opened my mind to a lot of opportunity. So you must be wondering, okay, uh, you're crazy, you took like all these classes, but did your credits count? 
The answer is yes and no. Some of those credits I can apply to my master's if I want to, but most of them actually don't really count for anything. But again, I don't see it that way. I don't see that everything has to count to something, you know, like you have to take a class because that's what's going to give you a job. You have to do this. I think that especially today and no matter where in the world you are, education shouldn't be something that we are catering ourselves toward. I think we should all be in the you know, business of catering our education to ourselves, really upskilling in different ways that we want to. I knew that I would likely not get that level of vocal training anywhere else. And so I really invested time in that. I really invested in, you know, it was an incredible opportunity for me. So the, uh, the short answer is, is not really, but I feel like I learned so much more than just what a credit would count toward. And in fact, I started my master's. So I graduated from Harvard in May and I started my master's this year but it was primarily online and so I did my first semester but I deferred the rest of it because it just didn't make sense for me to do something so experiential in this kind of a setting. And my master's was in music business but they also have master's offerings in songwriting, in production, in so many different things, in jazz, in film composition and the master's offerings at Berkeley are in Boston in Valencia, Spain, and they're actually opening up a new center in New York very soon. So there's all of these opportunities and options if it's something you're considering. So what did that practically look like? You must be wondering, okay, great, there's these two schools. Just to clarify, this Berkeley College of Music is not the same thing as UC Berkeley, which is in California. This is actually in Boston. It's fairly close to Harvard. It's about a 25 minute bus ride. So. I would joke that during my college experience, I was married to the number one bus because I was constantly going Agi Piche back and forth between these two schools, sometimes multiple times a day. So it was a little crazy, but um, it, it was what it was. And they prov help provide travel subsidies and things like that. And it does take a lot of time management and requirements, you know, because it's not easy to balance the two schools, especially, you know, even just think about the friends you're making, where are you spending the most time? Because Harvard is your primary undergraduate experience, you do spend the most time there because you often live there, but it's really what you make of it, you know? Uh, I performed professionally in Boston, New York, a bunch of different places in the US, and most of my bandmates were from Berkeley. So it was cool. I spent a lot of time in the practice rooms, rehearsing, working with incredible professionals. And the thing I was most grateful for at Borojara, at both places, was just the diversity. It was amazing. I remember the first band I created at Berkeley. My drummer was from Puerto Rico, my pianist was from Japan, my guitarist was from Nebraska, and my bass player was from, I think, the Middle East. And it was just, I was like, wow, think about this. Like all of these cultures, and an, and an Indian girl, all of these cultures coming together and being able to create beautiful art was just amazing to me. And it was always fun to me to take my friends from Harvard to Berkeley and vice versa. I've actually written a, you know, a blog post about this. I'll link it in the description box so you can understand what that journey was like because it was really weird because both institutions are very different, but I had a great time and I was very grateful. And you might be wondering, is it really worth it? You know, um, of course it is a little bit more money than your regular tuition would be which is a lot, you know, but luckily Harvard does provide a lot of financial aid if you need it. I think it is because I think the beauty of college, no matter where you go, is of course the learning, the teachers, the friends you make, but it's mostly about the fact that it's one of the only times in your life you're going to be surrounded by that much concentrated diversity across, you know, multiple, whether it's race, international backgrounds, if you're in an international environment, um, socioeconomic class, everything but people who are your peers. Because except for school, you never have that environment. When you're in the working world, you're always working with people much older than you, much younger than you, and it's harder to make friends in the same way who are just your peer cohort and to build connections at that stage and age. So to me, that was the most beautiful experience. And I would highly recommend you know programs like these. And I've, I'm so excited to see that there's more and more that are existing. I've, heard of some starting to crop up in India as well with design and business and in other international locations. So keep your eyes on the lookout for programs that fit you and your needs and um, things that you can explore. So 
So that's a little bit about the program. Let me know if you want me to make a video on the Berkeley application process separately or if there is anything else that would be useful. And um, if you are considering this program, feel free to let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. And yeah, I'm sending you all so much love. I hope you are safe during this crazy, crazy time. And thank you for being part of the fam and part of the journey. Lots of love.